We physicists have waited 100 years, beginning around 1916, for this photo. It is a region dark holes may very well be one of the most captivating and puzzling peculiarities in the universe. They are monstrous monsters in terms of power and yet practically undetectable to us. A dark hole weighing perhaps two to four million times the mass of the sun. But because of the research that was put into them over the last couple of many years, we've gone from knowing literally nothing about them to getting to find out more and more very close and personal. And while things have just gotten more insane, Makaku recently announced that we finally got a look at what's inside a dark hole. This new data carries light to the subtleties the universe of science could have missed from the beginning. Join us as we dig further into dark holes and divulge what's inside. Space is enormous. What are dark holes? Before we get into the details of what Makaku found, we need to discuss the main. Despite the fact that the majority of us have some idea what dark holes are, there are still a few holes justified information. You see, in 1916, Albert Einstein published his theory of general relativity, which predicted the existence of dark holes. At that time, the concept of dark holes was purely hypothetical. It required an additional 50 years for the scientific community to find evidence that dark holes actually exist. This occurred in the 1960s. They were studying the Cygnus star cluster when they saw a strangely dazzling blue star that was emitting X-rays. This star was not a stale object but was circling around a giant dark something. Upon further examination, it was seen that the X-rays weren't just moving around on their own but they were being sucked into the dark thing they were circling. Hence the name Dark Hole. This discovery was significant because it gave evidence that dark holes actually exist and that they were not just an invention of Albert Einstein's wild imagination. While that was great, it also meant that there was this incredible entity in space that we critically had to learn about. So, researchers from around the world got to work. This dark hole opening was named Cygnus X1, and it is located in the star cluster Cygnus, around 6,000 light years from Earth. And it was no small discovery. It's multiple times more brilliant than the Sun and extraordinarily dense, which makes it have intense areas of gravity. The gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape from it. This is why it is called a dark hole. The concept of a dark hole is both intriguing and it is a terrifying region of space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. Whatever gets too close to a dark hole will be maneuvered into it, gone forever. But that part of danger makes it even more important to learn everything there is to know about them. Was this it? Or were we just beginning? The answer ended up being the latter. After the discovery of Cygnus X1, scientists began to look for other dark holes. They found that there may be close to north of 100 million dark holes in the Milky Way alone. But because they are so extremely hard to detect, we still don't have an accurate number. But from its vibes, there are several million dark holes in the Milky Way, in our very system, which makes them even more important to study. So let's break it down. The first concern with dark holes is always going to be gravity. Their gravitational pull is so intense that anything that enters it gets packed down cosmically until it becomes a singularity. In simpler terms, dark holes are like cosmic vacuum cleaners that suck everything in. One of the most terrifying parts about the research that's gone into dark holes is the fact that if someone were to fall into one, they would get sucked in that they become a single line. This cycle would happen slowly, and the person would die before the final form really sets in. So let's just say that no one should step into one. But they're everywhere. So might we ever really be in danger? Despite the fact that the nearest dark hole to Earth is around 500 light years away, it's still close enough to raise different kinds of criticisms. In 2021, scientists were able to produce the first clear photo of a dark hole, specifically the M87 dark hole. This dark hole was shot several evenings in succession, and with each photo the analysts gathered to more and more proof about it. They wanted to stitch the individual photographs together to make something that filled all the gaps. This way, they were able to figure out that there are three layers to a dark hole. It's not just one single expanding opening of nothingness, as many people believe. Things are much more complicated than that. To even get to the nothingness part of a dark hole, you have to make it through the first two layers. The first layer is known as the event horizon, while in the first layer it's the point of no return. Once you pass the event horizon, there's no way other than straight ahead and you will be sucked into the dark hole. 
and the three layers only get worse from there on out. The second layer is the photon circle, which is the region where light circles the dark hole. Any light that enters this region will be trapped and cannot escape the dark hole's gravitational force. Finally, we come to the third layer, which is the singularity. This is where everything that enters the dark hole gets packed out cosmically until it becomes a singularity. The singularity is a point in space-time where the laws of physics as we know them break down and we can't predict what happens next. At the singularity, the density is infinite and the laws of physics as we know them stop existing. Now what makes this even worse is the fact that every single dark hole you study will be completely different from the last. Sure, they really do mostly follow the same three-layer concept, but the way they operate could be infinitely different. At this point, if this were anything else, all we'd need to do is jump back on those telescopes and just study the bottom line in detail. But with dark holes, you can't really do that. Scientists can study dark holes indirectly by observing the radiation they produce and the gas and dust that surrounds them. Sending a probe like the Voyager into a dark hole isn't possible because anything that enters the event horizon is pulled towards the singularity where it is compressed to an infinitely small point. So you can't really waste billions of dollars just to get a reading every time because the moment the probe gets close enough it'll just crush into nothingness. Because of that apparent issue, scientists are left with no choice but to study these objects in a two-layered manner, even though they are three-layered peculiarities in actual reality. To make matters much more challenging, there are also the two issues of every single dark hole being unique and the laws of physics as we know them breaking down at the point when we try to study the inside. This means that the traditional methods of scientific inquiry don't really apply to the study of dark holes. That doesn't mean that the researchers haven't been busy. There are lots of different theories and explanations of dark holes and, well, with each one things get more and more interesting. One of the most compelling theories about the formation of dark holes is that they are made from collapsing stars. When a star all depletes its fuel, it can no longer produce enough energy to counteract the force of gravity that is constantly pulling inward. As a result, the star begins to fall in on itself, becoming denser and denser as it does so. If the star is massive enough, this process can go on until it becomes a singularity. To understand the concept of dark holes in death, NASA scientists directed their focus towards the center of the world M87. Astronomers noticed a really strong whirlpool of very hot hydrogen gas that was spinning at an unusual speed of 1.2 million miles per hour. The sheer force of this spinning circle of gas should have made it wildly fly apart this way and that, but it didn't. Researchers concluded that there must be a giant mass collected at the center of the universe to prevent this from happening. This massive object weighed as much as 2 to 3 billion suns and must be a dark hole. But that's not the only theory where dark holes spin. In 1963, the New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr used Einstein's equations of gravity to provide the best description of a spinning dark hole. Kerr showed that a spinning dark hole wouldn't implode into a point as previously thought but to a ring of fire or a thin disk. The disk would be spinning so quickly that radial forces would prevent it from falling. This spinning disk of matter is called the ergosphere, and it is the region surrounding the dark hole where the laws of physics begin to break down. But the most fascinating feature of Kerr's solution was that it predicted the existence of an Einstein-Rosen bridge, also known as a wormhole. This is a theoretical passage through space-time that connects two separate regions of the universe or even two parallel universes. The idea is that if one were to fall into a dark hole instead of being crushed to nothingness, one would be sucked down a tunnel through the ring of fire and ejected out a white hole in a parallel universe. To figure out how this works, we need to take a look at the concept of space-time in Einstein's theory. Reality are not discrete substances but are interconnected forming a four-layered fabric called space-time. Objects with mass bend this fabric creating a gravitational field that makes other objects move towards them. Now imagine a sheet of paper representing space-time. If you put two points on the paper and draw a space-time, but what if you could overlay the paper flatly and make a shortcut between the two points? This is the basic idea behind a wormhole. It's a shortcut through space-time that connects two distant points in an instant. Wormholes aren't just a science fiction concept. They are actually an expectation of general relativity. Although no one has ever observed one directly. The reason is that wormholes are inherently unstable and would collapse very quickly. However, 
the existence of an Einstein-Rosen bridge would mean that dark holes are not only cosmic vacuum cleaners but could also be gateways to other regions of space-time. So might we ever use a wormhole to travel through reality? Unfortunately, the answer is probably no, not yet. In any case, even if we could stabilize a wormhole, it's unlikely that we could use it to travel faster than light. Einstein's theory of special relativity predicts that the speed of light is an absolute limit on how fast anything can move through space-time. But the idea of wormholes and dark holes as pathways to other parts of the universe, or even to different times, has been a subject of interest and speculation among physicists for decades. The idea that there may be shortcuts through the fabric of space-time allowing travel through vast distances or even into the past might be revolutionary if we could actually achieve it. The mongrel wormhole, one of the most fascinating ideas in this area of study, is named after the mathematician Royer who first described Einstein's equations of gravity. This type of wormhole is essentially a theoretical passage through space-time that could connect two distant points, such as two different universes or even two different times within the same universe. The mongrel wormhole is ring-shaped, like the looking glass in the tale of Alice to a world where animals talk in riddles and logic didn't necessarily apply. Passing through the mongrel ring might actually transport a traveler to another universe or some other time where the laws of physics may be very different from those we know all about. But at the destination, that could just be normal. While the idea of wormholes as a means of interstellar travel or time travel is certainly exciting, as we've mentioned before, it's also a subject of contention and debate among physicists. Some have pointed out that wormholes and especially mongrel wormholes may be unstable or difficult to navigate due to the intense radiation and subatomic forces surrounding their entrance. The critics argue that Einstein's equations of gravity, which are used to describe wormholes and dark holes, only work for gravity and not the quantum forces that govern radiation and subatomic particles. To truly understand the nature of these anomalies, Another theory is needed that can merge the laws of gravity with a quantum theory of radiation throughout the universe of science. This is known as a theory of everything, a single theory that can combine both Einstein's theory of gravity and the quantum theory. Michio Kaku, who's a famous theoretical physicist, has been working on a theory of everything for many years as well. While there are lots of different versions of what this could be, the one that has shown promise is superstring theory. Superstring theory combines gravity with the theory of radiation. The theory suggests that subatomic particles are actually tiny vibrating strings, and that the universe is an orchestra of these strings, just as different musical notes correspond to different vibrations of a violin string. Different particles in nature correspond to different vibrations of a superstring. One of the fascinating things about superstring theory is that as a string moves in time, it warps the fabric of space around it, producing dark holes, wormholes, and other exotic solutions of Einstein's equations. This actually means that superstring theory not only unifies Einstein's theory of gravity with the quantum theory, but it also explains a great many of the mysterious anomalies that we see in the universe. But there's a catch. The extra dimensions of space-time that superstring theory requires are so small that we can't actually observe them directly. The most accurate measurements that we can make in our labs only use the four dimensions of space-time that we know all about, length, width, depth, and time. So how can we even know that the extra dimensions exist? One possibility is that the extra dimensions are curled up so tightly that they are invisible to us. Imagine a piece of paper that has been tightly rolled up into a cylinder. If you were an ant walking along the surface of the paper, you might not notice that the paper is curved. Similarly, the extra dimensions of space-time in superstring theory could be curled up into tiny circles or twistings that are invisible to us, even though they affect the behavior of the strings that vibrate in them. Another possibility is that the extra dimensions were more apparent at the beginning of the universe, during the Big Bang. According to some versions of superstring theory, the universe began in a state of 10-dimensional space-time, with all the dimensions equally apparent as the universe expanded and cooled. The extra dimensions began to collapse and curl up, leaving us with the four dimensions that we observe today. If the scenario is correct, then we may be able to detect traces of the extra dimensions around us. The math involved in superstring theory is incredibly complex. It has opened up entirely new areas of mathematics that were previously overlooked. However, the challenge of solving the problem of a quantum dark hole has proven to be an elusive one. While many physicists have attempted to tackle this problem, no one has yet been able to do so. Edward Witten of the Institute for Advanced Study at Princeton has called superstring theory 
21st century physics that fell accidentally into the 20th century. Last year, several groups of physicists independently announced a significant breakthrough. They found that string theory could completely solve the problem of a quantum dark hole, although only in two dimensions, not ten. Many physicists believe that it's only a matter of time before someone cracks this problem, given that the conditions involved are definite if difficult to solve. Until then, it's still too early to buy tickets for intergalactic travel or time-traveling expeditions. But when it comes to dark holes, with all of this, one thing is clear. There are just too many questions and, surprisingly, more answers to these problems. Michio Kaku's string theory puts one more twist on it all. Perhaps the Big Bang wasn't quite as big after all. He says it was not a massive explosion as many would naturally suspect. It also didn't make a loud noise like one could expect from a bang. The Big Bang theory doesn't provide an explanation for what caused the alleged bang or how it happened. It simply states that it did happen. Truly, we need a theory that can account for what happened before the Big Bang. This is where string theory comes in. According to this theory, our universe could have been formed from the collision of two separate universes or it might have emerged from another universe like a child being born from its mother. This connection between universes is known as a wormhole, which is like a tube connecting two bubbles. It's possible that we may have already found evidence of this umbilical cord that connected our universe to another. In a way, we could just be living inside a dark hole this whole time but not know a thing about it since we exist in four dimensions and can't see anything beyond. It's possible that we're in a dark hole and the dark holes we're studying are actually wormholes to these other dimensions.